at this point in time, looking at the polls over a, a long period now and the trend, which suggests that this referendum is very likely to end in a no vote, what is your reaction to that and, and what hope do you see over the next couple of days of actually changing minds? Well, we've got a section in the Constitution now which sets up the process that we're going through, the referendum process. That is, the majority of voters in a majority of states. I'll wait until the Australian people make their mind and their, their wishes clear. I'm not going to be ruled by polls. If we want to be governed by polls, then why would we have a governor? We just want a pollster and decide how we're going to work and live. Now, I think the Australian people, and there are many of them, that are still to vote, and I'd encourage them to vote yes in this referendum. There's nothing to fear here. There's only good to come out of this. There's a vision to come out of this, and there's hope to come out of this. So the truth of our... Integrity as a nation is what's at stake here, the truth of that. And we will need to face up to that on the 15th of October once we know what the, what the outcome is. I'm, I'm confident that we are able to get sufficient votes and a sufficient number of the states to get us across the line. I, I'm not, I don't believe in the polls. I, I was in the... I was in the, in the um, Opposition when Bill Shorten was the leader and we thought we were going to win government. And, of course, we got the biggest hiding possible and we never went anywhere. So polls tell you lies and don't believe them. If you're fearful about the confusion, vote yes. Don't vote no because no takes you nowhere. The Indigenous disadvantage question has been at the heart of this and nowhere is that more obvious and more uh, on show than in the most remote communities in the country. We're here in Broome uh, and, and you are very well aware of the situation that many communities face as you drive hours out of Broome, out of Darwin, out of Alice Springs and other parts of the country. If this is a no vote this weekend, what do you think it says about the future of funding and support for different Aboriginal nations to, to remain on their own land and get support? Well, I, I'm not going to go into the uh, draconian agenda that I sense the, uh, the, the, the opposition have got if they, win, if they ever win government. Um, it's just too awful to contemplate, quite frankly, in terms of the progress that's been made in supporting or establishing Aboriginal organisations to respond to the needs in our communities, the legal services, the land councils, health services, the uh, uh, other agencies to help our communities. Um, those, those agencies need to be supported and, and not brought to the ground. Um, I, I take a view that we as a nation have got to uh, deal with not only the legacy issues of how colonisation took place and the displacement of the Aboriginal people, but we've got to deal with a, a future that is based on trust, based on respect, and based on mutual obligations here, mutual response. Now, there are, there are some people who talked about mutual obligation, but they corrupted it. It wasn't a reciprocation. It was a one-way street. So there's got to be a mutual reciprocation if you're going to talk about mutual trust. If you want me to do something, then you've got to do something in return. We have this opportunity now with the referendum to change the way we relate to each other and the way governments go about their business. If you want the government to deliver more of the same or to become more draconian, then vote no. If you don't want them to go down that path, vote yes.